so you know on the short term short to medium term we're very long dollars i think it i think it really it flies again as a consequence of liquidity and credit contraction and the fact that it's the it's, it is the um, reserve currency in the world mm-hmm. everyone needs dollars in a liquidity crunch and and, and there's, a, there's almost no asset that is uncorrelated even gold gets smashed because in a in a liquidity event correlations all go to one yeah it's cash king yeah. <laughs> and and so but but when you come out of that when you come out of that car crash that's when balance sheets matter that's when solvency matters and so like there's that window now but you know and we're already positioning for the next and we'll be too early and that's fine i don't care um, but the next is where balance sheets matter. It's where solvency matters, and it's and then the following step after that is where all of that liquidity comes in, and and it has to find a home, mm-hmm. and um, and it's not going to find a home in financial assets, in typical financial assets, because people are going to be scarred from this. But you think about a baby boomer that's got. They're like a year or two away from retirement and they've just lost 30% or 50% in their 401k or whatever the fuck it is in whatever country you happen to be in. There's no ways they're going to dive back into the, into the market. Like you might because mm-hmm. you're young enough. Mm-hmm. But when you're 65, it's like, nah, I'm no, just, I'm going to have done. to just cut the losses. I'm, I'm going yeah. what's, to, what's the safest thing that I can, that I can own? And so, um, the, the 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 traditional financial, if you think about the S and P or the Nasdaq or something like that, look, I think they could go up, um, really, just as a, on a nominal basis. But on a real basis, um, it's just that's not where well, it's not where we want to be. So, um, and then on a even longer time frame, I think in that. Capital is going to rush to the U.S. because it's going to be the most liquid markets. Mm-hmm. It's going to appear to be the safest with respect to rule of law and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, but ultimately, the, the 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 biggest pools of capital are going to move towards um, resources, essentially, amongst other things. And then in that space, when you're looking at governments and balance sheets and solvency. The way that the West is dealing with this today and the way that the, I'll loosely call it the East is dealing with it looks on the surface to be similar, but it's not. And what I mean by that is while you've got enormous amounts of debt being taken on by the Western governments, that's not true in the same, um, to the same extent on a percentage basis at all. In many of these other countries, I mean, it's on a very basic level. Like, if you if you live in, I'll take a country, Thailand. I used to live in Thailand, a place up there. When when the shit hits the fan there, and you have a big recession, or you have something like that take place, people look after the family looks after you. It's a it's a so the social structure in much of those countries is a familial structure. Mm-hmm. Nobody's looking at the the government to provide health care, education, um, the whole social safety net. They're um, anti fragile. They're not dependent on the government. It's a look. At, it's like almost like blockchain. It's a decentralized system, right? Yeah. So each family. And and I'm not saying one is better than the other. It doesn't really matter what you think. At the end of the day, that's the structure. And in, and in that environment, what it means is that the government doesn't just go into enormous amounts of debt and, and put themselves at risk um, because they're not socially expected to in the same instance or in the same manner. Whereas in the West, it's like they're going off the deep end. They're just like, throw the kitchen sink at this thing. It doesn't matter. Deficits don't matter. Da, da, da. So, and then again, that's why MMT, I think, is, is going to look so attractive on that front. So... At that point, then you you literally have had a shift of wealth from the west to the east, where people will be so caught up in the smoke and in, the, in all the chaos, and we're going to come out of this in like ten years' time, and they'll be like, "Fucking hell, look at that! Look at what the world looks like!" You know, mm-hmm. and so that's my 
sort of long term view. Um, right now, I'm like, I'm not going, I'm not buying assets in those countries, but I'm, I'm very excited to do so at some point. <laughs> um, and the assets that you're referring to, are you still talking about like uh, Maslow Hayekou need assets or is there any specific domain of assets that you're looking at? Look, for the, for the foreseeable future here, I want to own um, deep value stuff, which, um, look, going into this, we, the, the, the most asymmetric deep value opportunities um, were pretty much in resources. And I'm not a resource guy. Like I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, you'll have like plenty um, newsletter publishers or whatever, and their whole schlep is either gold or it's, I can whatever. I, I'm not that guy. I'll mm-hmm. buy baked beans if mm-hmm. they make sense. To make me. money. Don't yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go global, and we'll. I'll buy whatever. So that's just where the market led us to, right? The the extremes in value on a relative basis just were there, and part of that is just because it's cyclical, and we'd come out of a bull market in sort of two, 2012, 2013 period, um, and so there was a whole lot of supply destruction, as there always is. Um, and across many of these sectors. And so now coming out of it, that's also definitely where I want to be. I want to be invested in those, in those sectors. Like you asked about sort of where I'd be in, in, in Asia. I'm going to, I'll wait and see. I'll see mm-hmm. what the um, global marketplace looks like at that point in time and what presents the most asymmetric value. I don't know what it might. It might be... Indonesian government bonds. It might be real estate. It might be hotels. I, I don't know, um, but that'll be an easy enough equation to to figure out at the time. But I do think it'll be an extraordinary setup and one where you can probably largely put that trend trade on and just sit on it for the next fifty years. Kind of. Thing. Let, let me ask you this though: um, when that opportunity does arise, whatever it is. Do you think at that point the US dollar would still have that premium for that forex currency exchange? No. 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 The dollar will have uh, where where I want to get out of the dollar is when it's when everybody is thinking that it's got nowhere to go but up. Mm. Right? So as as you have this credit contraction take place, there's gonna be more demand for dollars. If you, you could literally pull up a whole lot of the EM currencies and we've been watching them break one after the other. And this was before bat flu came and landed on our fucking doorsteps. And, and the one that's been holding out against it, sterling a little bit, mostly the euro. Okay? Euro, yeah. And we were seeing one after another of these break and I'm sitting there with my head trader, Brad, and we're like, fucking hell, this is... We were, that's, so we went into this very long dollars, gratefully, not because we knew bad flu was coming along, but yeah, and that's worked out well. But um, if that, and I, and look, anything is it's just probabilities. Good investing is just probabilities. I don't know for sure what's going to take place, and nobody does. Um, but that's a very decent probability, and and what, and then you have psychology takes over because people build narratives around what's happening. You know what I mean? You have to, your brain has to solve a problem. Like if I showed you um, something that looks like an apple, mm-hmm. but it's not an apple, I'll be like, mm-hmm. what is this, Amir? And you'd be like, Kudas is a sort of an orange. Like your, your reference point is whatever you know that looks like it. Mm-hmm. And you have to try and solve what that looks like. And you come up with a story about, it. oh, it's like maybe they maybe they crossed an apple with an orange and it's a whatever the fuck that is, right? And in the same instance, when you have these events, let's say like the dollar runs, people will, will have to solve their problem in the head and they go, why is it running? Oh, it's because the US is, they'll, they'll be, you'll see CNBC will come out with all sorts of shit around why the, why the dollar's the best place to be and why there's nowhere else and why it's going to, you know, there'll be justifications for why that exists. And, and most of these people will have never even seen it coming in the first instance. But, but when you get that, that environment, and then on a relative basis, when I look at these other currencies and other markets, you're going to start looking and you'll see, oh, there's a country, balance sheet's strong, like you've had a whole lot of bankruptcies, 
corporate bankruptcies because of the dollar issue. And guess what? They're not going to be going out and using the dollar anymore as a funding mechanism, right? Because mm-hmm. they've been torched, torched by it. And so they'll use something else. I don't know what that something else is. Yeah, I was going to ask you, by default, something has to substitute it. So. 